Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Modern College of Business and Science in Muscat, capital of Oman, from which we broadcast this series of webinar today. Uh, today's topic is teaching English online, a topic that concerns students, parents, teachers, and educational authorities around the world, as the new academic year is approaching during this period of COVID-19. Our speaker who will attempt to answer some questions around this topic is Dr. Fauzia Azadjali. Dr. Fauzia is an educational consultant and a certified trainer. She is also the executive assistant of Network Development Lead uh, for Oman UK Alumni Board. She got her BA and MA from the University of Leeds in TESOL, specialized in teacher education. The title of her MA thesis was Fostering Professional Development in Post-Lesson Discussions. She got her PhD in Curriculum and Teacher Education from the Leeds Beckett University, UK. The title of her thesis was The Impact of Curriculum a Prescription on English Teacher Professional Identity in Oman. Uh, Dr. Fauzia started her career as a teacher of English language and climbed the ladder all the way through to become a teacher trainer. In addition, she worked in the field of curriculum development and occupied managerial leadership and advisory roles in the Ministry of uh, Education. She also worked in the sector of higher education as the Director of Quality Assurance. In addition to several conferences and seminars uh, that Dr. Fauzia participated in, she delivered a number of successful online courses during uh, the last few months. And finally, in terms of reaching out, Dr. Fauzia has authored and co-authored several publications related to the field uh, of uh, education. So let us uh, welcome uh, Dr. Fauzia with us today and enjoy you know, her talk. Uh, Dr. Fauzia, the microphone is yours now. Please go ahead. Thank you very much, Dr. Saeed. Uh, I'm not sure if we start the share slide now. I'll share the first slide with you and um, Welcome everybody. First of all, thank you very much, Dr. Said, for introducing me. I think you've said it all. Uh, first, of, be before I start, I would like to thank the Modern College Dean, uh, staff, Dr. Said personally, and uh, whoever has been involved in arranging for this um, webinar today. Uh, I think as Dr. Said said, this is a timely topic during the spread of um, Corona, COVID-19 virus. And uh, most of us have gone online. It's gone viral more than the virus itself, I have to say, because, you know, it's the only tool that we have at the moment. Uh, particularly, I would like to thank uh, our colleagues in the IT department for the, for the arranging for this session to happen. Inshallah, it will go smoothly. Uh, a small announcement, I would like to... Uh, make this session kind of interactive with yourselves. It's going to be uh, like, I'm going to present, yeah, but I would like to get your views on some issues. Some of the issues would be by asking you to send your like comments in the chat box. Uh, the other, uh, we, we kind of, we want to get your views as like a percentage. We would ask you to vote on certain areas when time comes. So it's going to be mutual between me and the IT department, okay? So let's get started. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Our topic today is teaching English online. And Dr. Said has introduced me, so I don't need to say anything about myself. Okay. Today we are going to talk about the following contents. First of all, very briefly, we are going to talk about online teaching. What is it? Like, what are its features? What, what identifies online teaching from the normal face-to-face -face teaching. We will talk about the tools and the platforms, which I'm sure are not new to you, but this is just a reminder and like, you know, a think, reflect kind of session. Uh, we will uh, dig in deeper into the benefits and the challenges of teaching English online. Here we will go particularly to English, and then we will talk about the, the skills teachers need to teach uh, English online, and we will focus more on designing your online courses. 
uh, go deeper to talk about the daily lessons and provide you with examples of how to teach the receptive and the productive skills and then let you leave this session with some useful tips. All right, let's get started. So first of all, what is online teaching? What does it mean to you? In one word only, please, just in one word, send me in, your, in, the, in the chat box what online teaching means to you. OK, I'll move now to check out your replies. OK, let's see. I want to get your contributions now. OK, so online teaching is that kind of teaching that is delivered completely online. OK, so it's a complete online delivery of materials using the Internet without any physical or face to face sessions. This is very briefly what online teaching means. It's complete okay. online. Doctor, we have got some other answers. Have we got some answers? Let's see what, what, what our colleagues said. Teaching using online tools. Yes, exactly. It's teaching using the online tools only. As I said, it's only internet. It's not kind of a combination. It's not blended. No, it is purely using the internet. Uh, yeah, let's go back now. OK, after defining what online teaching means, let's move on to talk about the features of online teaching. OK, uh, there are various resources that you can use with online teaching. This is something that is different from face to face teaching, by the way, that the resources are huge online. There, there is the feature of using video and audio making yourself or bringing in the ready-made ones from the internet. There is also the option of screen sharing, which I am doing now. So when you teach, you share your screens and I'm sure you know this. Uh, there is the, this feature which is, you know, which is replacing the handout distribution in real classes. There is document, link and image sharing. For example, if it's a reading text that you want your students to read, you would share it as a document or as a link or as an image. And there is a use of a whiteboard. There is a whiteboard. I mean, online teaching equals or is very, very similar to real life teaching. The whiteboard is there and I'm going to talk about it very shortly. You can also get comments from your students. These comments are either ver verbal or written in a written form as we did now with the chat box when I asked you to, to describe online teaching with only one word. So you can get a written format of your of the comments and you can get verbal comments. There is also the breakout rooms. This is one of very good features of online teaching on the platforms. You get breakout rooms where you can create groups, small groups or pair work. There is also hand raising where students can move a hand or, you know, wave at you. And there are others, I'm sure, which you can think about. Okay. So I thought I would share with you the my page from Zoom. This is not from Teams. This is from Zoom. This is how a platform, a, the, Zoom is a platform as Teams exactly. This is how it looks and you can see that there is a security button, the participants, how many are there, you and your students. There is the chat and there is the share screen. There is a record feature also where you can, where you can record your sessions. For example, if a student misses a class, they can always go back and watch it or go back to it, refer to it even before doing their assignments or their work. If you po if you kind of you post it on the college or university um, website. This is the whiteboard I was talking about, and I'm sure most of you are familiar with it. The whiteboard is very, very equal to the whiteboard that you get in real life. You can write, you can you know, erase, you can format, you can draw and you can clear and you can save what you wrote and send it back to students. OK, so since we are talking about the features, let's move on to talk about the tools and the platforms. Google uh, Zoom is one of the platforms which I just mentioned. 
Google hang Hangouts are something that is this is the fee, this is the, the image is another platform which some you know some others use. Google Classroom is something that is again used widely around the world. Sorry, Dr. Fauzia, for interruption, but it seems that you have to re-share the presentation again. Really? It's showing, yeah, it is stuck in one slide only. Oh, really? Okay, let's go back. I have to re-share it. Went frozen by somehow. Okay, is it okay now? Yes, now it's okay. It is okay now, yeah, go ahead. Okay. OK, so we were talking about the platforms. So we were talking about the platforms and we just mentioned Zoom and, and Google Hangouts. We mentioned Google Classroom and MS Teams, Microsoft Teams, which, the plat which is the platform we are using today. These platforms are there to help you teach English and any other subject online. OK, there are also some tools. These tools are like, you know, for example, I know that the Modern College uses Blue Quill. As, a, for, as an LMS uh, uh, tool. There are also some other tools. For example, this one is called Odomodo. It connects teachers and students. This one is called Socrative, okay? Where you can create games using Socrative. There is this tool, which I'm sure most of you are familiar about. It's called Kahoot. It's also good for making videos project or project as they write it. It's for creating multimedia presentations. Vimeo is for creating videos and TED-Ed is for speaking, for create sharing of lessons and for getting model like, you know, videos and speaking. OK, now I would like you to access this website if possible. If you can get your mobile phones, and navigate to the following link to explore more tools for online teaching using this link. I'll give you a minute or so to do so, and then I'll move on. E-learning industry, it's called. So if you go to www.elearningindustry.com, digital education, tools, teachers, students, you will get to see it. E-learning industry is like, you know, it contains 15 tools for teaching English and it's it's very, very interesting. I mentioned some of them in the previous slide. This one, Socrative Project Vimeo, but this this website contains more. OK, I'll carry on now. All right. Now, Mr. Uh, Saeed Nasser, I would like you to share the link of benefits and challenges of teaching online. I'll, I want to get your views. What are the benefits, uh, for example, before we go into the benefits and challenges, the benefits of teaching online are more than the challenges. Do you agree or you do not agree? Do you agree that the benefits of teaching online are more than the challenges? Let's do this. I'll leave you to take the screen now, Mr. Saeed. Uh, thank you, Dr. Fauzia. I have already posted the link and everyone can click on the link and uh, respond to the question. Yes, please respond now. We can give you like, you know, uh, one minute, even less than a minute. What's the time now? Yes. We will wait a little bit more and see what, what, what responses we get. Mm -hmm. It's all about the benefits versus the challenges. Do you agree or we don't agree? Some people are with online teaching and some are like, you know, are not comfortable with it. So let's see what, what, what you think. Let's get the replies now. Uh -huh. Most of you agree. Very good. Very good. Most of you agree that the benefits of online teaching are more than the challenges. And I presume presumed it would be this because, you know, as you say, there are many, many, many tools that we can always employ to teach online. Thank you very much, Mr. Said. I'll share the screen now. Am I sharing my screen now? Yes, you are there yes. now. It's coming okay. now. OK, good. So most of you agreed that the benefits of online teaching are more than the challenges. And this is a very, very good sign of, of how positive we are 
about online teaching. I know it's something that is trending, it's new, and not all are kind of ready for online teaching and learning. Good. Since you agreed that the benefits are more, then let's have a look at the benefits. What benefits are there? Flexibility. Flexibility is, is huge with online teaching. You can go flexible with the number of students, with the time you want to do it, with the place. It's just an option that is not there in face-to-face -face teaching. More options, as we said, there are various options that you can choose, pick, replace with online teaching, unlike the face-to-face -face teaching. Professional development for yourself. I'm not saying that as teachers, you might want to leave the modern college one day. However, it opens doors for you professional development for you. Once you become confident with online teaching, then you can apply to teach online anywhere in the world. It's, it's something that is uh, required, highly required. Okay, uh, There are various tools, as we said, with the benefits, as we said, there are tools. That, you know, remember the Socrative, the, the, tool, the website that I showed you? There, is, there are plenty of tools which you can share, use, and you know, make, make good use of in your classroom. It is user friendly when we become when we become friendly with the Internet. It's a user friendly tool, platform, way of teaching. OK, but we need to be ready for that. It's interactive. You see, for example, today I tried my best to make it interactive and I got my colleagues in the IT department to get the voting done. I get they got you to send your your comments in the chat box. And that's how we can make uh, online teaching go interactive. Time zone friendly, like if I am in Oman and now it's like uh, 4.50, it can be morning in the other part of the world and we can still run an English classroom online. Self-managed courses, I'll come to talk about this a bit later, but it's about you as a teacher managing your own courses, you as a learner managing your own learning, what you want to learn. OK, let's not forget. Let's not forget the learners as we go through. There is virtual classrooms, as I said, which we can make good use of and we don't have to stick to one classroom, the same place where we are daily. OK, I'm not saying that face to face teaching is a bad thing. I'm saying that the world is moving now, given the new current circumstances. With the benefits, there are certain challenges. Let's look at the challenges now. You need to be kind of confident with regards to the technical and access issues because it can become a challenge. Like, for example, just now there was an issue where I thought I was sharing my screen and then Mr. Ahmed reminded me to share my screen. So it's like te those technical issues which we need to grasp. Uh, if there is lack of skills, if there is lack of training, then of course that would become a challenge. Now I'm urging all like, you know, higher education authorities to prepare their teachers, to equip them with the right skills and to provide them with the right training for online teaching so that it becomes successful. Sometimes you feel uncomfortable and you lack confidence when you go online and your heart starts beating very fastly right at the beginning, but then you need to familiarize yourself with the tool. You need to calm down and I will show you ways of doing this. Okay, Online safety. By the way, online safety is a very, very important issue which we need to think about very uh, carefully and make even our students aware about it. When you as teachers take something from the Internet, then make sure that you acknowledge that and you see the resource where you've taken it from. Uh, when you post your materials online, make sure that the platform is secured. For example, I heard that some, some of the platforms were not, uh, not to mention names now, but some one of the platforms wasn't secured enough. And the, like, you know, I know that some places, workplaces have uh, withdrawn from using it because they were not sure about the security. So safety, online safety or cyber safety is something that is critical and we need to think about it. This can become a challenge. Uncertainty about its usefulness. True. Until today, I, you know, I searched in the before for this as a preparation for this session. I searched about the usefulness for online teaching, and there isn't like a huge research that's been done 
to, to evaluate the usefulness and the effectiveness of online teaching. However, there is enough to kind of backbone what we are doing now. Uh, academic integrity, cheating and plagiarism is another issue that students need to become aware about, especially with online teaching. Okay. Student readiness. We as teachers just assume that students are ready. What have we told them? What have we trained them on? What have we explained to them with regards uh, using online teaching? How ready are they? What do they know about it? So these are all challenges. If your students don't know anything apart from opening the screen, then that's an issue. It can become a challenge. However, I, I have to say, I have to admit that the youngsters and our students are much better than us in the IT skills. Assessment becomes a challenge for teachers because, especially exams, assessment is an issue that higher education needs to think about deeply because we we cannot always re rely on assignments and we need other tools. So like, I know quizzes are there, but still we need tools to, to you know, kind of assess properly. So these are the benefits and the challenges of teaching English online, if you like. How to overcome the challenges which I just spoke about? We said internet safety, yeah? So with internet safety, we need to read more about it. We need to familiarize ourselves with cyber safety and how can we go about it? We need to activate the policies about plagiarism and dishonesty and make our students aware of those policies and we employ them ourselves. I think uh, policies at higher education need to be revised based on the online teaching now. I'm not sure if the element of online teaching is included in your plagiarism policies or not, but maybe a review or a revisit of the policies is worth doing at this stage. Training, you can always get training to overcome the challenges of online, uh, of, you know, online teaching. Training shouldn't, ha doesn't have to be face to face. It can always be done online as well. Develop your skills, the skills, all the skills which we'll talk about a bit later. You need to develop them to make yourself ready for online teaching and learning. Research, why not? Read, read more research on online teaching so that you become comfortable, you uh, trust online teaching and you feel uh, secured, you feel that you're doing the right thing when you teach online. Uh, how about conducting research yourself? It's always interesting to do something with your students, with your organization to, to, to evaluate online teaching with your, from your experiences. Okay, this is the research I was telling you about. What does research say about teaching English online? Uh, there is this study by done by uh, Lam, Mr. Lam. I know Mr. Lam. This is Mr. This is Martin Lam from the University of Leeds. Uh, Lam and Arisandi, they did research, and this is a very recent one in 2020, on students' use of English online. Okay, student use of English online. The results showed that the students prefer self-instruction and entertainment. See, this is what I mean by making it interactive. Don't, don't teach online. Don't make it a boring experience for your students only seeing you and your face on the screen. Make it entertainment, make it entertain, uh, make it uh, self-instructed by them. Uh, Al-Biladli and Al-Sharif in 2019 uh, they did a literature review. They looked at all the review in the literature regarding blended learning. This is not online teaching or online learning. This is blended, which is a combination of uh, online and face-to-face. -face. This review demonstrated or showed its effectiveness. So blended learning, which is half of it is online and half of it is face-to-face -face showed its effectiveness. Effectiveness in what? In developing English language skills, see? In, in effectiveness for the learning environment and help to promote students' motivation to learn English. These are all valuable findings for the blended learning and it's really like it's it opens doors for online teaching because blended, 50% of the blended is online. And that's very promising for online learning and teaching. 
the third study which I chose for you is done by Socilio 2019 and the use of Kahoot. Remember when I talked about the platforms and the tools, I mentioned Kahoot. Kahoot is a tool that is used as a teaching and learning strategy, okay, for English language. Again, research that done on Kahoot proved that Kahoot is effective for students. How effective it made learning a pleasure, active and comfortable for the students. And you need to me looking at these this, um, uh, studies, I believe that online learning and teaching is going steadily on the right ladder. OK, now I want your contribution again and I'm going to move to the maybe question and answer, uh, answer or the chat box. Ahmed, you correct me. I want you now to uh, answer this question. What what are the skills we need to teach online? Think about the skills. What skills you need to teach online? Can you send me your answers, please? Send me your answers. Let's have a look. In the Q&A, the call. In the Q&A, please. What skills do you need to teach online? Communicating, so you need communication skills. Mm -hmm. What else? Come on, guys. Let's see what you think instead of just me talking. Let's encourage you. What do you think, Dr. Said? What skills they need? Well, I mean, uh, teaching online, you need uh, a number of skills. I mean, related to IT in general, mm -hmm. and also there are some. Uh, you know, uh, interpersonal, you know, skills that help you to interact with your students, you know, you know, better because it's not like, you it's know, really good. when you're in classroom with them, yeah. need also you maybe don't, change a little bit your character. Thank huh? you, thank you, thank you. Don't give more. Enough. <laughs> <laughs> Let's wait for them now. Come on, I encouraged you, and Dr. Said contributed some of his thinking. What do you need? What skills do you need to teach online? Distance learning, OK, a digitalized way of teaching. Uh, yeah, are these the the, oh, the previous ones? Should I move down maybe? Uh, why am I reading these ones? OK, uh, I need to put down the list. OK, 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 OK. Teaching to a certain extent. OK, it has to be technical skills. Good technical skills. What else? Social presence, mm -hmm. self learning, mm -hmm. Good. teamwork. Uh -huh. This getting now ability to deliver the information. Very good, yes. Yeah. OK, good, good enough. Yeah, I think let's go back. Thank you very much. Thanks. OK. You've listed some of them and I'm going to mention them now. OK, communication skills. This was the first one to be posted because I think it's, it's, it's really key. With communication skills, you know, it's those verbal, and nonverbal communication skills that you need. Uh, for example, your tone, your voice, your style, uh, your poses, your pace when you speak, and um, body language. Communication is also to do with, for example, with contacting the students when you send them emails, when you send a, a post, for example, about a session. So these are the kind of skills you need to familiarize yourself with. Technical skills, these are all to do with the network, with the uh, platforms, with all, all the technical side of it, which I'm, I have to admit, I'm not so good at. I need to develop myself. Research skills, which I spoke about, and you need to have some certain research skills as an online teacher. You need to be critical, by the way, with your research skills. Huh? When you become critical, I mean critical reader. I mean, um, where are my notes? You may, I want you to become critical thinker. When you read any study, don't just believe or assume that it's correct because it might not be. Uh, dig deeper in the study. Uh, think carefully about it and see where it comes from. OK, uh, critical analysis of the findings reached. 
So you need to develop those research skills and familiarize yourself with them so that you are a better and a more critical online teacher. You need some pedagogical and content skills. These are to do with planning your lessons, with your knowledge about your curriculum, knowledge about your syllabus, knowledge about the content that you teach, and knowledge about your learners, motivating learners. This is all to do with teaching and learning. Okay. Design skills, these are to do with design. Design can be divided into two types. Designing your syllabus, your course, which I'm going to talk about uh, a bit later, and also the design, the, the technology part of the design. So these are the skills, the up-to-date skills you need. Management skills, by the way, management is, management is huge, it's big. Management, you, you, it's about you, being able to manage, for example, four classrooms, uh, maybe hundreds of students, not at the same time, but how you manage them online? What is your time management for that? And when you manage all of that teaching, don't forget your personal life and your management of your own time. For example, I know that some students send teachers uh, questions about assignments and whatever, you know, given the circumstances now uh, at midnight or at 11 p.m. or so you need to set your own management skills and management tools and communicate these to your students so that you are like you know comfortable both with teaching and with your own life and time patience nothing comes very quickly you need to be patient to to develop all of these skills you need to be patient because um, uh, nothing comes very quickly. You take your time and then it's 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 gonna happen. Trial and error, never mind. Some some sometimes things go wrong, but that's fine. It's not the end of the world. Things can go wrong. I mean with whatever, especially with online, that's fine, absolutely fine. And don't feel worried or like you know, don't feel a failure that you can't do it right at the beginning. It will happen eventually with practice. I'm gonna talk about this a bit later also. OK, this is about this is what I said, designing your online English courses. OK, now you've got uh, a curriculum or you've, you've got a syllabus. How to go about designing your own? Huh? Now designing it differently, it's personalizing it. First of all, you need to identify the outcomes. OK, and then you need to identify the outcomes. Not all outcomes are needed for online teaching, by the way. Your courses, your syllabus, your curriculum has been written for a non-online environment, okay? So when you come to identify the outcomes, identify the ones, the ones that you need your students to acquire. I will talk about this in the next slide. Organize these outcomes in a certain way. De determine assessment procedures. So identify the outcomes, organize them, determine the assessment procedures and finally design the activities. Don't rush about design, designing the activities first. Let's see. You identify the outcomes that you want learn, your learners to achieve online. Achieve online, remember? Huh? Not everything that's there we need to do online, no. What knowledge you want them to develop, to acquire? What skills? And what kind of attitudes maybe? Identify these, okay? And then you organize these outcomes into manageable units. Having done so, you determine the assessment procedures that you want to have for each and every outcome. After determining the online assessment, only then you can move on to creating and designing the online activities, which are again different from the uh, activities you would, you would design normally. OK, this is very briefly. Let's move on to your daily lessons now. With an everyday lesson, daily lesson, either face to face or online, you would plan it, deliver it and assess it. However, with online lessons, planning is very, very critical. It's important that you spend enough time planning so that your whole lesson would go smoothly. OK. With planning your everyday lessons, OK. Would you use your old lesson plans, which you have from previous years? Would you use the same previous lesson plan style? I mean, it depends on the style that you use in your organization, or you would invent a new one. Personally, I would invent new lesson plans for online. 
because you don't need to le read longer texts for, for in lesson planning. You need like signs, you need bullet points, you need a different way of doing it. Create new strategies to match online needs. This is when you create your activities. You need to create the online the strategies that match the online needs. Not all any not not all strategies are fit or right to be used online. How long is a question again you need to ask yourself with regards to teaching. I think uh, for students to be kept on the screen and to, to sit there and watch you watch for the watch the lesson. I want to go beyond one hour. It would only be half an hour or 45 minutes. You know, uh, I did some, maybe because I'm a researcher, I like research. I did a quick research on my Instagram for my followers. Okay. And I asked them for training. I said, uh, how long do you want the training session to be? One hour or two? Most of my followers said one hour, no more than one hour. This means that people really find it hard to sit for more than one hour on, you know, watching a screen. Remember, it's not a real classroom, it's virtual. And what equipments you would use is again another thing. These are the tools. Huh? You don't have to use all the tools or all the features in one lesson. No, you pick and select, but you just need to know the equipments you would use. OK, now how to start your lessons? It's always a hassle how to start the lessons. I think this scenario is familiar to you. You sit there, you check the screen and you say, you ask your students, can you see me clearly? Can you hear me? No, yes, no, miss, I can't. Yes, sir, I can. So this scenario is repeated fine for, you know, for the first minute maybe, but then straight away start your lessons daily. My advice is to start your lessons with a game, a warm up or an icebreaker activity. If you just Google these games as you know, warm up games or icebreaker activities, the first two or three minutes of every lesson, make it a welcoming uh, start. Because remember, it is online, it's virtual, it's not real. Even in real situations, you, you would need to start this way. But here, the need is even higher. Now you started your lesson, you deliver it. Uh, your surrounding now. What is around you? Huh? Where are you? In the bedroom? In the kitchen? In the dining room? Decide on that. Your surrounding is important. It sends a message. Eye contact, would you look at the screen or would you look at your students? Would you look at your, your PowerPoint, your whatever, or contact your students? Break it down. Don't leave it all the time with the slides being there. No, show your face, talk to them, go back and forth between slides and yourself. Video and audio quality and lighting. Remember, the quality of the video and the quality of the audio is important to send your message to your students, uh, especially with English teaching. For example, when you speak, you want to be heard clearly. You are modeling the language, so it it it, it needs to be clear enough. Lighting is enough is is important. Some people use the ring uh, ring lights sometimes. Uh, by the way, with the, with the internet, I got to know that if your internet goes poor, you stop the video and just rely on the audio, then the quality would increase. If you if you notice that you have poor poor uh, internet connection, just stop your video, make it only audio, and explain to your students. Check student attendance, make sure that they're there. Uh, now, students, do you have to see their faces or not? It depends on what you are teaching as an English teacher. Sometimes, for example, you are teaching speaking today. Of course, you would want to see them and, you know, hear them. So you do want to get the audio and videos on, but not every time, not when you are teaching grammar, for example, or vocab, you see? So it depends on the situation. Also, add, add variety to your tasks, as we, as we said. Let the students use their mobile phones or not is a question. Now our, our students are all, you know, the youngsters are all the time on, they've got their mobile phones in their hands. So why not make use of the mobile phone to search for something as I did now with you? I said, grab your phone and um, search for, for this website. Get them to search for things on their web phones and then maybe talk about it in your lessons. 
make use of the mobile phones. Uh, allocate time to work privately, okay? Either group work or pair work. Don't make all your online lessons just your voice, okay? And of course, always have some extra tasks uh, underneath your sleeves, just in case you finish early or something, you might want to explore more with the students, okay? Now, this is a thinking question for you. Now I'm trying to make my session interactive, okay? I would like you to answer this question by ranking, okay? How easy is it to teach the following skills and knowledge online? Uh, Mr. Saeed is going to show you a question, this question, it's going to be there, and I want you to rank these skills and knowledge from easy to difficult. One is the easiest. For example, if you think grammar is the easiest, give it one. If you think writing is the most difficult, give it six. So off you go, Mr. Saeed, over to you. Post, post the link, please. For Thank us. you, Dr. Thank Fauzia. Uh, I've already posted the question in the Q&A. Okay, so good. If you can please uh, answer it. Yes, let's I, again, I'll give you one uh, minute to answer it. And I would like to hear from you. Let's see. What do you think? You've got the four skills and you've got the knowledge of grammar and uh, vocab. What do you think? What is easier? And what is difficult? What is more difficult? Most difficult? Are you done? Let's see the results. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. OK, so. Listening seems to be the easiest, isn't it? Wow. Reading comes next. And then speaking is half the way through. Grammar is half the way through. Vocabulary is difficult. Writing is the most difficult. Mm. <laughs> I always thought vocabulary would be easy. <laughs> there is an update. OK, let's see. Still writing is the most difficult. Speaking has gone down now. Speaking has gone down. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. OK. OK. OK, OK, OK. Oh, this is confusing now, Doctor. No, 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 not confusing. No, Doctor, this is, this is about we are getting equal answers. Like, you know, if we look at the percentage here, about writing as the most difficult and vocabulary as the easiest, we see that these are equal. So we've got like, you know, um, we've got a very, I want, I thought I would see it in percentages, but never mind because in percentages is much easier to see, but it's okay. It's again, it's clear to me now that writing is the most difficult i can tell and vocab wins as the easiest good i'll grab the screen now thanks sir saeed thanks am i sharing it please just check with me are we there yeah yes you're back yeah i am back good all right so you see your answers here depends on your experiences whether you know, maybe you've gone through the experience of teaching writing and you weren't so comfortable doing it, then you found it difficult. Or maybe you've experienced it properly, but still it proved to be difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, how easy and or difficult these skills are depends on your ability to deliver it your ability to learn them. So there is no right or wrong answer here. It depends on your talent and on your ability for doing it. It depends on your ability to uh, equip yourself with, uh, with the skills to teach them. Meet that challenge. Ask yourself, which of these is the most difficult for me? And let me explore more about how to do it easily. Mm -hmm. This is something for you to think. To take with you. 
today's session. Let's move on now to provide you with some examples of teaching. You know, having sp spoken about the uh, how difficult and easy to teach the four skills and uh, vocab and grammar. Let's have a look. The receptive skills, listening and reading. How can we go about teaching them? OK. For listening and reading, of course, you cannot get the students to read online at the same time while you are doing it. It's time consuming, it's boring, and it's going to waste all your time. Send your articles, texts, and links prior to the lesson to your students. Prepare interactive tasks, games, quizzes, questions based on those texts, okay, that you want them to read. So in class, you are only going to deal with the tasks, not with the reading itself or the listening itself, because this needs to be done previously. You can always bring in some listening during the lesson. Listening is a bit easier than reading. Reading is time consuming unless you are teaching certain skills, like for example, scanning. Then you would post the text quickly and then scan it quickly. Say, OK, what is the main point of this text? This is different. OK, third point is get students to search for certain topics on their phones and allocate time for that. Don't let them go away with it. Just give, say you've got one, you've got five minutes to do so. Come back to me, show me your results. Have a conversation about the text, the text you sent earlier. You can always have a conversation about them and write notes on the whiteboard. Also, we want you to encourage effective online search strategies. Even in live lessons, there needs to be some live search strategies that you need to like equip yourself. Listening to songs and interesting video clips is, is again something that you can bring in to your listening. Uh, students are always good with songs and you can, you know, make good use of them in, in your in teaching listening. Prepare authentic recordings or tutorials. You can always record yourself or get something authentic from outside or whatever, you know, conversation goes around, record it, bring it. So, you know, it's like uh, you, you make it authentic for your learners. Rules of teaching online productive skills. Let's see. Now speaking and writing. Again, for speaking, you need to plan for certain contexts or situations for your students to practice their speaking skills. And create a situation. Say, for example, you're applying for a university or you are applying for a scholarship. Uh, what, what what you you are going for an interview? Let's have the conversation. Get them to prepare in smaller groups, and then come back to you. You can have it one to one, or you can have it as a whole class. But make it interactive again. Make notes when students speak. By the way, do not interrupt the flow of their speech. Leave them to you know go on with their speaking. Either there are errors, you make notes to, um, about those errors aside in your own notes notebook, and then. When the speech is over, you can always bring these uh, errors uh, for discussion without nominating students, without saying Ahmad said so. No, you just go about narrating on how to say the correct. Uh, again, prepare interactive tasks, games, quizzes, questions to teach speaking and writing. You mentioned that writing is a difficult, a difficult skill. Uh, I would say get the students to, uh, for example, you explain the uh, process of writing. Okay. In today's lesson, we will explain the process of writing. Explain the whole process, send them away with the task of writing. Next lesson, let them send you their writings prior, prior to the lesson. You have a look at them and comment on them in the lesson. This is one way of doing it. But you need to read more about how to teach these specific skills. And this is a training program on its own. Maybe the authorities at your college or university might want to arrange for you know for you to get some training on these areas. You can always sum up your sessions by getting students to ask questions. This would develop their speaking skills, build confidence in themselves. And from these questions, you can pull the contents of the next session. <coughs> Watching clips of famous speakers is something that you can always rely on. TED, uh, TED is a very good uh, website. Not maybe TED Talk or TED EDD, the one I showed you earlier. You'll find it in the slides. Okay, I think this brings me to the to the end, but not just yet. My tips to you: 
Don't teach the materials as they are because they are not designed for online teaching. Remember this. Even authorities, even course leaders, even program directors uh, should not ask teachers to teach every and each bit of the materials because they are not all designed for online. For online, you need this to be selective. You need to choose the outcomes that would achieve the skills, the knowledge you want students to acquire. <coughs> Don't teach every and each thing in your course book. Only focus on the tasks that achieve the outcomes. I already said it. Rehearse, by the way, this is a very important one. Rehearse your lessons and practice teaching with your family and friends first. If you haven't done it many times, if it's a new task, if it's a new thing, then please practice it beforehand. Try out the material yourself, okay? Uh, watch video tutorials to develop yourself. Uh, I previous, I, you know, in the slides before, I mentioned that some students might be frustrated, some students might not be comfortable with, with the features of online. They don't know it, they don't know how to do it. So why not? Think of some games to familiarize your students. Would you please uh, switch off your camera? Really? Why? You know, because the sound, the it's sound not, is not, uh, not clear, clear now. Yeah, maybe if you switch really? your camera, the sound will be better. Okay, let me see. You will improve the, uh, will improve the, improve the sound, you I'll, know. Yeah. Okay, I'll switch the camera and go back to the slide. Okay, go is ahead. Is it clearer now? Okay, so I was saying play games with your students to familiarize them with the features of your platform. Mm -hmm. You can always uh, think about or Google some games to familiarize them with the features of your platform if they are new to it, if you haven't done it before. Keep your lessons short, as I say, don't go about long lessons because they end up to be boring and you need to vary your tools in each lesson. Don't rely on PowerPoints only all the time. And remember the relationship between internet speed and camera, which Dr. Saeed now asked me to switch off my camera so that my audio becomes clear. And this is what we did. Remember the relationship? True, and it's happening now. And of course, check out your surroundings. Good. Before I end, I want you to vote for the last time now. Tell us what you think. Teaching English online can replace the face-to-face -face teaching. Yes or no? Mr. Said, over to you. Teaching English online can replace, can replace the face-to-face -face teaching. Yes or Thank no? Thank you, Dr. Fauzia. Uh, the question is posted in the uh, Q&A. Uh, may I request everyone to please uh, respond to the uh, questionnaire? Q&A or, or as a poll question? It's Q&A. Okay. The last one, Doctor. Okay, just scroll down. Okay. The last one. Yeah. Scroll up. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> teaching English online can replace the face-to-face -face teaching. The majority said no. <laughs> the majority said no. I agree with you. It cannot replace it, of course, but it's a way of doing it. It cannot replace it because face-to-face -face has got its own features, its own beauty. And online has got its own features and its own beauty. Yeah. So um, I, I have a feeling that the next academic year is going to be blended between face to face and live, and live online. Thank you very much, Mr. Said. So let's go back. I'll share the screen now. Yeah, let me share the screen now. You can am share. Back? Yes, am I yeah, back? Yes, back. Yeah. Okay, and that's it from me. These are the references that I have used. And thank you very much for today's session, for being there, for listening. I'm all ready to take your questions. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Fauzia, for you know this very interesting uh, presentation. 
about uh, teaching English language in particular online. As you said before, we use I mean these platforms to teach you know different subjects, but uh, you know it seems like uh, teaching language through you know uh, electronic platform represent you know a bigger challenge you know compared to other subjects, and uh, you know uh, the opinion is divided now uh, between people uh, you know on the ground. <laughs> people, some of them really think that um, you know it is possible to uh, use it uh, you know, successfully, and some you know. Uh, people think maybe you know we need them really to go you know uh, to face to face uh, you know with, with language in particular and uh, yeah uh, now I mean we can understand that because many students struggle because of you know other actually you know external factors like you know low signal and you know lack of you know technology lack of skills so as you mentioned I mean in your presentation that you need them really to prepare students and to make sure you know they have got the technology they have got the you know knowledge you know, uh, and how, know how to use, you know, these technologies, you know, and um, yeah, this, you know, things come, you take some time, but they come uh, after that. And it's interesting that, you know, uh, almost 75% of people think, you know, uh, you know, uh, online cannot replace, you know, face to face. <laughs> OK, but yeah, <laughs> this is uh, something, you know, understandable and maybe we can talk about blended more than, yeah. you know, uh, online in terms of, you know, uh, language yeah. teaching. Yeah. Now we do have, you know, some a uh, few questions. You know, uh, one of the most important questions about, you know, cheating and uh, plagiarism. Mm -hmm. OK, uh, some, you know, uh, attendees, they would like, I mean, to get more information about, you know, how to avoid, you know, cheating and plagiarism, you know, while, you know, teaching uh, online. And this is maybe a general question. It's related to other subjects, not only to English. But it is one of the challenges, you know, facing now uh, higher education institutions. Uh, student, you know, working from distance, and um, if you post them I in mean, uh, online, you know, quizzes and tests, you know, how you make sure that you know they do this, you know, um, without you know uh, cheating and um, plagiarism. Your experience in this regard will be appreciated. Yeah, thank you very much, Doctor. True, this is a very critical area, as I see. Uh, here, I would say employ or, or make good use of your policies. Get the students to declare. When students declare that they haven't cheated and that this is their original work, you take their word. However, when in future, whatever you discover, then you know, you even the certificate can be pulled back from the students. Once students are aware about the danger of cheating and plagiarism, then they won't go about it. If we teach them the tools for uh, paraphrasing, if we teach them the skills, we need to teach them how when you find something interesting, don't take it as it is. Paraphrase it, summarize it, uh, acknowledge the author, uh, teach them this and make them aware of the danger of plagiarism. Make them declare the originality and also familiarize them with the cheating and plagiarism policy. Online policy. That's why I think policies need to be revisited now. That's the only Thank thing you, you can monitor. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Doctora. Thank you, Doctora. This is a comment from one of the you know uh, attendees. You know they say the presentation well presented and uh, interesting and they uh, thank you very much for that yeah. uh, now uh, a question which you came i mean uh, repeatedly during you know your your talk uh, yeah. about a, a, a cultural issue and aspect yeah. of you know online uh, in particular the question was about you know uh, uh, reluctance of some you know female students you know to show the you know faces you know and to open the camera while you know taking you know lessons now the question says you know what are ways we can encourage you know our students to show their faces you know uh, you know for during a presentation of you know or, or you know uh, implementation of the lesson i mean i don't know if this is something really we can uh, ask i mean uh, students or it is um, you know i don't know how this is related actually to the effectiveness 
of you know teaching English actually. If you just want to shed light on that. Mm. As as I said, as I said, I think the, the speaker or whoever posted this question, this teacher, need to understand that students do not have to show their faces all times, at all times. Not at all. No one is, you know, for example, especially for females, they are not ready to come on the camera, for example, if they're not wearing makeup, for example. So for them, it's like getting ready. And that getting ready takes time. And people won't get ready, you know, because of Corona COVID, we are all locked down and we are all at home. So who who is going to get ready, wear their makeup, get dressed properly for outside, sit in front of a camera, attend a lesson of an hour and then go back to sleep? <laughs> yeah, but uh, Doctora, let me let, let me challenge you there a little bit. Oh, uh, yes. this, this is issue not only you know, for female, but uh, male students also. My, my experience actually, uh, you know, in uh, MCBS, you know, yeah. I taught I taught them some modules online and mm. uh, I discovered that, you know, some students actually, you know, they, you know, uh, switch on the laptops and they log in and they just disappear. And they, they are disappear. not there, actually. When you call them, you know, Ahmed, Ali, Ahmed, Ahmed, nobody, nobody replies, actually. They're not nobody. there. <laughs> so without camera and, you know, watch, seeing their faces, so I you think, don't know I if think they are there with you or you're just talking to yourself. I think the answer is make your sessions interactive and you will see them all there sitting, waiting and can't wait for the session to happen. If you want them to share their face, then give them a task that requires presenting. They would be there. If you want them to be there alive, for example, get them to do something. So if, if they are only passive listeners, of course they will go for a, a cup of coffee. No one would be there for you. If it's something that doesn't require them to be there, make okay. the lessons interactive. That's my advice. Okay, now, now, now this question I know from who, one of, you know, uh, the expert, you know, in the area, uh, yeah. he, she, she asks actually, you know, what about the issue of ghost writing? Ghost, uh, what is it? Ghost writing. Ghost. Ghost writing? Yeah. Not uh -huh. It's like someone else is writing. Someone else right. writing. Yeah, someone else. You know, these are things you cannot avoid with online. This this can become one of the challenges. Not, not just with online, even with real life situations. We do get that. I mean, in face to face teaching, you send students to do a task and then someone at home would write it on their behalf. So this is there. How you used to deal with that. It's nothing new, by the way. Yeah, I think it's it is the same. I mean, whether online or, you know, I mean, assignments and things like that, and things happened. But you need, I mean, as a teacher to use your, uh, you know, knowledge of a students and um, his level and standard to judge whether, you know, his writing is yes. uh, original my, or someone else wrote for him or something like that. Yeah, this is, my you know, advice, you need other techniques. Mm. Yeah, my advice would be at a glance, if I am a teacher who know my students very, very well, at a glance, I can tell mm, this is not your style of writing. At a mm. glance, you can tell. Mm. How about okay. doing the homework? Yeah. Yeah. And another question is, you know, how to communicate online effectively without the use of, you know, body language. <laughs> this is teachers not wanting to show their faces now <laughs> or bodies. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but you know, without body language, I, th I think they think maybe body language, you know, represent a big, you know, kind of, um, you know, element in, in face of this teaching and you're yeah. losing that, you know, uh, online. So, yeah. yeah, I have to say it is one communication skills are one of the skills that are highly required for online. Mm -hmm. I mean, not just for online, even for face to face, but for online. Imagine if I was sitting like this and only you can all what you can see is just my mouth moving. Would you would it be interesting? I mean, body language is key. And as teachers, you you need to, to, to have your body language. This, this is one of the key skills. Um, I'm afraid that that person must familiarize themselves with body language and communication skills. OK, now th this question, uh, I'm not sure I know really um, uh, why, why this question is posed, but uh, maybe you'll understand the question better than me. Uh, mm -hmm. The, you know, uh, elim eliminate, I mean, the presentation is a cause outcome, you know, presentations of students. Uh -huh. Okay. I think we, we can ask, you know, students to do presentations uh, online. Yeah. You know, we so can. What's, what's your experience there? How to uh, manage students' presentations, 
effectively online. Yeah, get them to share the slide. Uh, this, this this comes back to the technical skills. You need to be able, maybe maybe some train the teachers so that they are able to uh, to administrate who shares the slide. Get the students to share the slide and present their work. Mm. It's, okay. it's, I, think, I think this is the only way so we that to, we to, to, to manage, I mean, uh, you know, the student role actually properly. Yeah, yeah. G to give, give them a role. Give them a role. Let them share the slides like what we are doing now. You take the slides from me and I take the share from you. Mutual, let it be that way. When you divide them into groups, let them plan their presentation and then Take the slide and present. Let them prepare the PowerPoints. It can be done easily. Excellent, excellent. Now there, there's a question. Uh, some, some, you know, uh, of our attendees, they think, you know, there is a, a contradiction uh, between uh, asking people, I mean, to use different kind of technologies uh, mm -hmm. while teaching online, and you know, time management. Okay, the relationship between, you know, uh, time available. To teachers and you know using multiple kind of you know technologies and you know techniques and strategies you know during teaching online you know how these things go together because they think you know maybe using you know uh, a lot of technologies you know it takes time and it 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 uh, it's up you know time of you know the lesson itself so how you know uh, to do that uh, successfully time that's, you know that's why I say, yeah that's why I said you don't have to use all the tools at once. In each lesson, you need to use uh, one or two of the tools of the features, for example. If in this lesson I used group work, then that's enough. Next lesson, I can use another tool or another or another strategy. So you can always vary your lessons, make use of the tools that you have over a number of lessons, not in the same lesson. Of course, it's, it would be impossible to do it all. Time is very, yeah. Yeah, great. Now, yeah. from your from your experience, is there any kind of a relation between uh, age and uh, responsiveness to online teaching? I mean, if you go from you know uh, first, I mean, <laughs> I mean <laughs> junior students and uh, you know senior students, what's yeah. your experience there? Who responds? You know, respond respond. I mean, more to and and uh, interact more with the, with the you know uh, uh, online teaching senior students or junior students? Well, I think with age, there is the, old, the older generations, for example, us, I, I would I classify myself as those who were a bit reluctant to use online tools or online platforms. However, when I got started, I found my way through it. With regards learners, uh, to me, I believe in one thing, regardless of the age, it depends on how interesting, how engaging, how interactive it is. You can always engage a 70 year old student and yeah. a seven year old student. I will give you an example. Um, my niece is seven years old. OK, she's in one of the international schools. And you know what she yeah. does in the classes that she doesn't like? She would log in there, show her attendance and then switch off. The teacher would not know switch off to a previous music lesson or whatever because that lesson is not interesting enough for her. So this is what kids do as she's only seven years old, you see. So it's not about age. It's about how interesting, how engaging, how interactive it is for the learners. OK, great, great. Now another another issue which is common, I think, in uh, face to face, uh, mm. you know, uh, teaching uh, mixed ability class. Mm. OK, I think this is a big, you know, issue in the literature. They it talk is. about you know how to handle mixed ability class class. Some books have been written and there's a big you know growing body of literature about that. Now how how this you know uh, concept of mixed ability uh, classroom uh, relate I mean to online teaching? You know I experienced this by the way in the training programs that I run uh, online via Zoom. Uh, I do have some of the attendees who are there and they are like you know following but they don't contribute, they don't answer, they, you know, when there's a brainstorming question, they would, you would see them quiet, you would see others dominating the discussion. But then I felt like, you know, are they benefiting or not? 
I, I encourage them in the session, and now I urge all teachers to do this, encourage them and say, OK, I'm really thankful for those who contribute. I still want to hear from the others and give them some time. And then, you know, one of them sent me a message saying, Fauzia, we I am following and I am absorbing. Um, I'm understanding. I'm learning from my colleagues experiences and I don't feel ready to speak now. And then I appreciated it. I said, it's OK. Whenever you feel you are ready, then please do contribute. Because see, some of them, it's not about their like. It is a mixed ability, as you say, and they do need time to absorb the materials. They learn from others through online, so it's fine. Just sense for that. OK, great, great. Yeah. Now, an another issue also posed by some of the attendees here, uh, the issue of motivation. Mm. OK, motivation, motivating students uh, online. Is it different from motivating students on face to face? Do we need do, do, to use I mean, different kind of, you know, uh, strategies and techniques to motivate students online uh, that is, are different from, you know, face to face? Of course, of course, with online, you need to bring in more, more tools, more cartoons, more videos, more audios, more interactive, more up and down. Uh, get your screen moving, get it uh, vibrant. Don't leave it still and don't make it boring. That's what they need to motivate them. Yeah, uh, now this is uh, a question I think is uh, directed uh, to us as you know, uh, MCBS. Does mm -hmm. MCBS allow uh, teachers to use other platforms like Kahoot, not just, you know, uh, Teams, Microsoft? Of course, I mean, as uh, Dr. Fauzia said, uh, Kahoot and the other te technologies, you know, can be, you know, incorporated, you know, together and used. But there's yeah. a question about, you know, uh, how to use Kahoot, Dr. Fauzia. I, to be honest, I haven't used Kahoot myself. I'm about to, expri to explore it, but I read about it. It's there. There is more than one article that I can, you know, send to you about using Kahoot. the research, the research which I mentioned in this um, presentation. There is the the, the research uh, link is in on the reference page. It's always there. You can always send your like teachers and students the the the, the research done on Kahoot. And it explains how to use Kahoot. Kahoot, by the way, is a tool. So yeah. it can always be used. I, I don't think it contradicts with any. I'm not sure about how to use it because I haven't experienced it myself. Not just yet. Uh, I, I, I used it more than once uh, mm -hmm. as a student and also as a, as a tutor. Uh, I think it's a very, very interesting. It, you know, well, I, I used it uh, as, uh, you know, to do some sort of, you know, polling and uh, competition among, you know, students. OK, you get, you know, uh, voting, uh, you know, and things like these, you know, mm -hmm. will uh, help you to, to understand, you know, the views of students when, when you, you know, work. So, so it's something, you know, really you can use, you know, pop, you know part of, you know, uh, other, you know, what? techniques uh, during yeah. your, your teaching, you know, uh, situation. Yeah. OK, now, yeah. Doctor, uh, there is a question. Uh, maybe it's not about, you know, teaching English you know, in particular, but it is about, you know, online. How mm -hmm. can we impart, you know, a general uh, study skills? through online teaching. How can we impart? Yeah, general study skills. General study skills into, yeah. in, uh, into online. Through online teaching, yeah. I think it's all, it's, it's a bit similar and I don't see a clear cut difference between uh, general uh, studying or studying English. It's you know the, the only the only thing that I always thought English is easier to be taught online rather than the other you know uh, general uh, studies. If I got the the um, uh, question correctly, if I understand it correctly, there isn't there isn't a big difference between this and that. Okay, so so it all depends on teachers also the way they can manage you know online and uh, use yes. it for different yeah. purposes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. OK, now uh, from your experience, Doctora, there's a question about uh, uh, training. Mm -hmm. OK, uh, how to, you know, uh, what kind of, you know, programs you recommend uh, to train teachers on teaching online? Yeah, I would say the first program, the number one is online teaching skills. Mm. 
online, online teaching skills. skills teaching skills yes is the number one i think uh, training program needed for the teachers and the second one would be the uh, the, the uh, that is very specific to the English language, teaching the four skills. Yeah, yeah. How to teach writing, how to teach reading. You see, the answers when we give them in the poll question varied in terms of difficulty and easiness. And I think mm -hmm. they do need that. If your audience are from, from the modern college. Okay, great, great. Now, oh, one question also related to the availability of uh, materials. Uh, you know, like uh, textbooks and curriculum for teaching online. I mean, now this is something like a new wave, okay, uh, coming around. And uh, do we have, you know, uh, textbooks or, you know, uh, material that, you know, really uh, designed for online? Because now what you are doing, you know, I mean, the teachers take, I mean, the same material that is, you know, designed yeah. for face to face and they just, you know, uh, you know, uh, make our, you know, some slides and, you know, PowerPoints out of them and then, you know, they go, uh, you know, online with that. Now, the question is, in terms of, you know, teaching English, do we have, you know, uh, some kind of, you know, international maybe, you know, uh, curriculum uh, designed specifically for, you know, uh, online? I am sure there is, but we just need to explore and contact publishers, I guess. I'm sure there is, but maybe because of before the age of Corona, no one wanted to go through the online option, but I'm sure it's there. It is there. Yeah, okay, great, great. we just need to explore and contact publishers, I guess. OK, uh, final question is uh, how to do group work online? Yeah, this is this is easy. This uh, you create your uh, your groups. It's mm. called the breakout. There is an option in Teams. I'm not sure in Teams, but there is. I think you can still make it in Teams. You can break. It's called breakout. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, explore it. This is what the teachers need to be trained on. You see, this is another training agenda for you, Dr. Saeed. How yeah. to how how to make good use of the features of the platform that the teachers are using. So the, the, the place is called breakouts. Teachers can make pair work or group work. You divide the students, you create as if you are having separate meetings. Meeting mm. one, uh, fulan, fulan, fulan. Meeting two, these three, meeting three. So you have more than meeting. And by the way, there is a feature. I haven't tried it yet. There is a feature where you can control what they are saying in the group. You can hear them. Mm, 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 don't you, yeah, you don't leave them in the group without monitoring. As a teacher, they are working in their groups. Here, your teaching becomes really interactive. Divide your class into teams, separate groups, and monitor what's going on. Each one has got their task, and when they are done, bring them again as a whole class. Exactly, and this takes us to another question, which is really, I mean, keep coming, I mean, repeatedly, and I think mm. you address them in uh, this question. Uh, mm. more than once about you know student engagement okay in uh, online situations okay uh, everybody i mean i think you know share the same view that this is a major you know challenge okay yes. how to engage students and i think there are a lot of uh, kind of you know strategies and techniques now uh, going around about you know how to increase okay the level of engagement of students in online uh, but still i think we need you know, maybe to familiarize, familiarize ourselves with the, you know, the teachers. technology more. Yes, yes. I think you need to familiarize ourselves and the teachers, and I need to familiarize myself also with all the features that we have on the platforms because we don't have a classroom now and we don't see our students. In the classroom, we get our board, we got our computer, we got our screen. But here, what have we got? We do have features, but we need to explore them so that we can create student engagement. It yeah. comes by us knowing what is there. Doctor, I think it's a whole uh, new world actually. We're entering is, now, but you know. <laughs> okay, and we all need them I mean, really to re-educate ourselves. Yes. Okay, yes. Uh, in order to be able to, you know, function, you know, uh, effectively in this kind of, you know, virtual, you know, uh, life, especially with this, you know, 
concept of uh, you know the fourth uh, industrial re revolution coming yes. you know way. Of course, of uh, course. So, yeah. so thank you very much, Dr. Fauzia, for your you know presence today and for your contribution. Uh, I think you know many many you know of audiences. I was spoke about you know really uh, the usefulness of this you know session and uh, they really appreciate uh, your uh, you know input and your contribution and i think you know the the, the you know answers you gave to their questions uh, elaborated on you know various issues that you know really have in their minds and uh, yes let's hope that everybody will go back home you know with the, some uh, thoughts of you know how to uh, be engaged ourselves with technology more in order to be able you know to teach you know uh, online uh, better uh, yeah. Thank you very much uh, for being with us. And uh, before we conclude, I would like just not to, you know, remind our audience that you know we have got you know uh, Professor Ali uh, Al Khatib, who will um, uh, be our next, you know, guest speaker. Okay, and uh, his talk will be about you know enriching students' experiences and uh, expanding their horizons. And I think this will complement what uh, Dr. Fauzia said today. And you know, but in a broader sense, maybe instead of focusing on uh, uh, English language only. So thank you very much, Dr. Fauzia, and thank you very much, uh, very much for our audience and uh, the team behind, you know, uh, the scene: uh, Said Nasser and uh, Abdul Qawi and Ahmed Munir. And uh, see you, you know, in the next uh, webinar, hopefully. Thank, thank you, very, you much. very much, Victor. Thanks. Thanks you. Thank you very much for all your efforts and thanks to the team for making this happen at an interesting and lively way. Thank you very you much. Must I'll see you at the time. Bye bye. Bye bye.